Hello and welcome to our project uh, presentation. So we're going to be talking about supporting learning and transition to school of Azidi Armadel children um, who are under five. And this research has been funded by the Michelle Bannister Tyrrell Scholarship. Uh, the main presenter today is Dr. Samaya Ba'akla. Uh, she's a lecturer in early childhood education at the University of New England. And also uh, I'll be presenting as well. And I'm a senior lecturer in early childhood education at the University of New England. My name's Marg Rogers. And uh, Samaya is going to talk to you about her personal experiences first. Thanks. Um, before I start the presentation, I'd like to share with you about my personal experience as a migrant that has motivated me to do this project. Migration to a new country that has very different culture is a big challenge. But for me, it was a choice and for the refugee is not a choice. And they misplaced by uh, force. Um, I believe any help and support can make a big difference in their life, and especially if the support is offering during a critical stage um, of life, such as childhood, it make a huge difference for entire life. Um, um, is this are from northern Iraq, southeastern Turkey, northern Syria, the Caucasus region, and part of Iran. Um, their language is Kurmanj, and most of their, um, them live in Syria and Iraq understand Arabic language. They have the world's oldest religious and Islamic extremists known as ISIS attacked to their homeland in Iraq and Syria in 2014 and killed many of them, include children and uh, used their women of, for sex slavery. Um, the uh, first group of uh, ZD refugee began arriving in Armadale in um, February 2018. Now we have 650 ZDs living in Armadale. There are some challenges and benefits uh, for them living in Armadale. Challenges are learning a new language in order to communicate with locals, lack of employment opportunities, shortage of language teachers and interpreters, limited public transport, and limited health organization and also housing. Uh, the benefits are uh, having safe community, free from ISIS, um, engaging with other communities and learning from each other, uh, welcoming and positive attitude of the local community about the ZD's um, families. Um, there are services that you ZD connecting with, such as settlement services, um, international, northern settlement services, Armadale Sanctuary Group, New England Family Support Services, and um, I also other services. Um, the literatures um, around this topic um, explain the importance of supporting refugee children's learning and a school readiness, um, and also social engagement with a wider community. For example, um, the current study by Kerry Rupert and Garris conducted in Australia, and they used a um, post-colonial theoretical framework of a third space to respond to the positioning refugees, families settling in Australian uh, communities. Third space is where we negotiate identity and become neither this nor that, but our own. Um, Similar to this study, in, uh, in, to this study, inviting people with different knowledge and experience to work collaboratively, we're hoping to create interdisciplinary space for this project to support school readiness and learning of these children. Um, the other study in Australia had also identified the challenges to real resettlement, such as securing employment, discrimination, and social isolation. The challenges can impact on the health, well-being of the refugees community, which there is a gap of knowledge here and further research is required. Um, the importance of, of play uh, for children's learning is well researched and is the children's pre-settlement were lacking the appropriate play as they had to play on the ground quietly to survive ISIS persecutions. Support and investment will help them to develop their well-being. Okay, so in the literature, they also discuss the importance of home, a home literacy environment and the way pre 
parents provide linguistic exposure. Um, it, they are, parents are also vital um, in providing children's vocabulary before they go to school. So pre-settlement is any children were lacking appropriate play environments that um, Samaya's just talked about, and they uh, support and investment will actually assist their well-being as well. So with any community project, uh, you need to identify the, um, the stakeholders as part of the cycle of effective stakeholder engagement. Um, you need to identify them and then you need to work with them um, throughout the project as, um, as shown there in the diagram and in the literature there. So when we say the stakeholders for this project, we've identified the New England Family Support Service and Hippie Australia, the Brotherhood of St. Lawrence, the Australian government and volunteers. Um, the Hippie project um, is, uh, was first used in Israel and is now used around the world with various at-risk groups. Uh, in Australia, the Brotherhood of St. Lawrence administers Hippie Australia, and it's a federally funded program um, that is in about 100 communities that are at risk. Um, and it's gotten just recently been announced that it's got another five years of funding. So 98% of the trained tutors in Australia are women, and about 40% are Indigenous. Uh, the government has funded two studies, and one that was longitudinal to look at the effectiveness of Hippie within the Australian communities. And I'll leave you to read um, the, uh, the um, quote there about um, from their media release about why they think hippie works. Um, there are two parts for this project. Firstly, the effectiveness of hippie program for the ZD parents and children will be researched. This project aims to support um, ZD's parents' capacity to prepare children for the Australian schooling. Um, the second part of the project is researching the sources that add to the program to make it more cultural appropriate. The aim is building sense of belonging among the ZD children in their new community and increasing the effectiveness of the program. This is a research question. Um, how effective is the hippie program in supporting parents' confidence and knowledge to better assist their children's learning and transition to school? How do, uh, do the family support workers and community translators foster inclusive support during home visit within the program? What is the impact of the program on parents' perception of their children's learning and well-being? Does the provision of culturally appropriate children's book and toys improve parents' perception of the program? Does the creation of children's book with local content improve parents' feeling of belonging and engagement with our middle community? So the methodology was qualitative and um, we're using an action research um, design informed by Bronfen Brenner's socio-ecological theory. Um, we've got five to 10 uh, parents as participants. The children are not participants, it should be noted. We're looking at um, the parents. Uh, the interview data with the parents will be audio recorded and transcribed and translated. We'll also be observing um, the parents as they work with the tutors and also so the children. Um, we'll be using Envivo software for thematic analysis and the findings will be given to the following organisations and also the parent participants. Um, the budget is mainly centred around um, the transcription and translation costs and also creating um, the cultural resources. So the timeline has been a little bit um, held up. Uh, ethics has been a problem, which I'll talk about in the next slide, but that's our basic plan for the project. And um, we have only just uh, in the last week got ethics approval and um, that has taken many, many months. So there's been some internal staffing challenges with ethics. Um, they also said that it needed to be a high risk application, even though we weren't working with the children because um, we put the word Azidi on it. And then they said, oh, that's an at-risk community. So therefore the whole 
um, research is uh, research project is at risk and so we had to explain very carefully and in great detail as to why we didn't think it was an at risk um, project because these uh, parents had been working with the um, New England Family Support for quite some time and um, they also didn't want um, members of New England Family Support on the research team which we had originally designed it that way um, so we had to take those out and they didn't want um, the same translator that they use um, at New England Family Support to be the translator we use. They wanted that um, hands-off approach because they, they said there were issues with conflicts of interest when um, evaluating the program. But that's um, the plan and we will start data collection next month. Um, here are our references. And there's one more page of references, but we'd like to thank you for listening to our presentation today. Thank you. That's it. <laughs>